there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we are going to paint this lovely little uh, barn on a prairie. I just thought this um, reference was so pretty and um, I thought it would make a really nice little work in my sketchbook. I'm using some regular masking tape to preserve the edges of my paper so I have a nice border and now I'm gonna sketch in with a red call erase pencil. Now the reason I'm using a red pencil is because there's a lot of green in this painting and um, just having that little peak of red here and there, even though it's really subtle, is going to give a little more energy to the piece. So if you're doing a landscape and it's almost overwhelmingly green that um, it almost can lack interest in a painting when you've got just too much of one color, using it opposite color on the color wheel, it's complementary color for your sketching color can really bring about some like color vibrations and some interest and it's subtle and you wouldn't even like look at the finished painting and say, oh, she sketched with a red pencil. You won't even really notice it, but it gives you that pop of color. That's why you see a lot of landscape painters that uh, do their underpainting in red or do their sketch in red with oil paints or they even work on a toned red canvas, either if they're like pastel or oil painters, might actually work in a, um, a tone canvas. I got some uh, very inexpensive brushes here to try out. They're from Artify and um, I thought I would give them a whirl on this uh, painting because I'm not sure if I'm going to do a review on these or just kind of a mention, but um, I've, I like to use you know, tools on a few different paintings before I make a decision whether I like something or not. But so far, these brushes are really nice. Um, I can see that they saved money on going with a softwood for a handle. The handles feel like probably a pine uh, or a spruce. They're very lightweight, um, so they don't have that balance that you would find in a more expensive brush. But as far as the uh, the quality of the bristles, they're a nylon, I believe. They, um, they hold paint well. They do a great job. Uh, they hold a nice fine point on the rounds, and, um, and I'm liking them. I'm liking them quite a bit so far. In fact, I did most of this painting with this, uh, I think it's called a, I think they're calling it like a number, it's not two inches wide, but I think they call it like a number one or a number two. They have like a number one and a number two flat. I'm not sure what that corresponds with exactly. One's probably about an inch wide and one's probably about an inch and a half, but they are really nice for sky flows and, uh, and I really enjoyed working with them. Now here I'm working with the large filbert that was in that set. I also like that brush a lot. It's definitely more of a filbert than a cat's tongue. If you were looking for a cat's tongue, this probably isn't going to be exactly what you want, but um, I'm thinking the set of 20 brushes was uh, maybe, I mean, it might be more than 20 brushes. It might be 24 brushes for like 24 bucks or something. It's very affordable but I didn't have any shedding problems other than the first time I used the flats. The first time I, when I washed the sizing out, I did have a few stray hairs, but it, the, after that first painting I did with that, it seemed to correct itself. The paints I'm using are, they're actually a paint that I haven't used in a while, and I really like these paints, except they're kind of hard to find, uh, at least in America, but maybe where you live they may be more um, accessible, and they're actually a student-grade paint. They are the Mission Silver Class by Magello Mission, like the company that makes Mission Gold. They made this watercolor set, it's a student-grade set, but if I didn't know that it was a student grade set, I wouldn't think it was a student grade set. Very vibrant colors, uh, semi-moist pans. They feel a lot like their Mission Gold class colors. Um, and they actually remind me quite a bit of M. Graham because I believe it's honey in the paint because it does have that consistency. Now, the only uh, warning I will give you with this paint, the only con, is because it's a, one of those palettes that has, um, it's got, uh, it opens up and there's 20 colors, I believe, 10 on each side. They are, you'll have half of your colors will be upside down when your palette is closed. And I made the mistake of storing this on its edge once and some of the paint oozed out of the pans. So that was kind of, um, that was kind of a bummer. I did manage to sc scrape most of it out, but, um, and, and replace it, but it did, I did end up losing some because it was yellow and a lot of it dripped down to the green pan because it was on its side and, and the, uh, the pans kind of, that, yellow just kind of slurped over. Uh, but other than that, I really like it. I just store it flat from now on and it's been fine. I haven't had anything leaking out of the top wells by doing that. And there is also replacement pans that you can get. And the pans are big. They're bigger than a half pan. They're bigger than their uh, Magello Gold pans as well. So yeah, just a little heads up on that. If I can find it, I'll link it to you. But if not, it's just called the Magello Silver Class. You might check on Amazon in your country. If you're not in America, you may find that they're a really good deal. They weren't that much cheaper than the um, the artist grade equivalent here when um, when I got these. But, um, but they are a great paint. So... There you have it. So here what I'm doing in the wet wash of the foreground, which was just a sap green, I am scraping with a credit card scraper. So I just save up old gift cards and credit cards and keep them in a bag. I just chop them up and keep all the bits in a bag. And then when I uh, when I need to, you know, a little scraper piece, I just, you know, 
grab out a couple. I always have a couple handy on my desk. You can reuse them many, many times. Um, I always have a couple in my travel bag and uh, it's probably the best painting tool that you'll find. There's some really interesting browns in this kit and um, I like the kind of almost purpley grays I can make with that reddish brown and my ultramarine. I love the granulation in this ultramarine. It just gives me this beautiful texture in the skies that I like. I know not everybody likes that. You could go with like the cerulean or the phthalo blue if you wanted less texture. The cerulean blue in this kit is similar to most of the eastern colors where the, um, these are a Korean made paint. The, uh, they use a phthalo for their cerulean. I'm not sure why. There might be some sort of regulations against, um, against using that pigment. Um, you know, different countries have different, different safety regulations, so that could be why. Uh, I am using some of the white that's in the kit to enhance the clouds, and I was just playing around here. I'm also using a little bit on the highlight of the fence post there and on the roof. So I, I used to be really against using white in watercolor uh, because that's the way I was brought up, but um, over the years, I've definitely mellowed out on that, and I think as long as you use it intentionally, then, uh, then there's no problem with it. I think that um, that it's completely up to you. I'm not entering, you know, my sketchbook in art competition, so it doesn't really matter what I want to put on these pages. It's whatever to get the effect that I want. Now, I'm using the liner from this brush kit just to kind of see how well it holds paint. It holds paint pretty well, especially for a nylon brush, and I'm just throwing in a bunch of little grasses. Uh, and flower stems and whatnot in the in the foreground there. And the other good thing about having the tape on your paper is that I can start the stroke on the tape and then pull it up. And then um, when I remove the tape, I have a really nice clean border and all the grasses seem to start off the page, all of those smaller ones. And now I'm using that liner with some of my mixed black, which was the uh, brown and blue. And I'm adding some shadows into the, uh, under the eaves of the roof. It looks like there's like a hay shoot on the side of that barn, which would make sense because it's in kind of like a prairie in a field there. And I'm also adding some cracks in the wood of the fence post. And finally, I'm adding the, uh, the wires of the fence post here. So it's just a fun, quick, easy sketch just to kind of shake the rust off and, um, you know, get some, get some more miles in my sketchbook. And I really enjoyed it. I'm glad I recorded it because then I got to share it with you guys. Maybe it will inspire you to grab your sketchbook out and paint. Oh, the sketchbook I'm using is the Arteza Square. I think it's about eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter. It's their watercolor, hard, hard bound watercolor book. It's got the, um, cl the cloth cover. I'm putting another uh, layer of the white because it did go really transparent once it dried. It's more of a mixing white than a like an opaque white, but uh, I really wanted to get that kind of um, milky poofiness of the clouds. Uh, and I'm flicking on some of that white too with a larger brush so I can kind of mimic the look of the Queensland lace that's growing around the um, around the fence there. So if I, I will try to remember to link the photo down below. I don't remember if it was from Unsplash or if it was from the um, Landscape Photos for Artists Facebook group, which is a great group. I highly recommend. Uh, you know what? I think I'll link, link both things and then you can have a look at that if that's something you are interested in. I felt the clouds needed a little bit more depth and moodiness, so I'm going in with um, some brown mixed with blue, but heavy on that, that reddish brown color. So it's almost like a... Um, like a maroon color and deepening my shadows. Uh, it's fun to play with uh, skies and clouds, especially if you're on something where you're not like too precious about it. I'm not worried about how this comes out because I didn't even know if I was gonna post it. So, you know, I'm just going back in there and just playing with that. Oh, and back to the sketchbook. The um, the sketchbook is the Arteza watercolor paper. The, the watercolor paper is, I really like it. It's not for everybody. Um, but the thing that I would avoid this, this would be using masking fluid because a paper, although it seems sized enough for my paint, I don't have any feathering. It does seem to tear with tape and with masking fluid. So before I remove my tape, I make sure that I uh, dry my paper with a heat tool. And that also the heat will loosen the adhesive on the tape. And plus, if your paper is at all damp, when you try to remove the tape, it's going to tear no matter what the paper. So you got to make sure that paper's dry. And also if your tape is warm, it's going to help it from uh, tearing. And um, I just love the look of a nice white border. So I find it worth the risk to do that. And there you can see that nice white border. And I also like having these big margins in my, margins in my sketchbook because then I can make notes. Um, I can make notes. Actually, yeah, that's all I have to do. I have to look back at my sketchbook because I wrote down the reference photo where I found it. So I will put that down below. And I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial today and I hope you give it a try. Play in those sketchbooks this summer. The weather's good for it. Get outside and paint if it's not too hot where you are. And as always, happy crafting. Bye now. <laughs>